Hello there, church family. This is your pastor, Dr. William Rosser. Just want to touch base with you before we get started today and let you know that on today we're celebrating the resurrection. But today's sermon is not going to deal with the resurrection as we would typically do because of the context of our situation and the virus that's running rampant in our land. We want to do something a little different, celebrate the Lord in a different way. In the meantime, I want you to stay home, stay encouraged and stay safe because one day eventually all of this will release and we will be back in our sanctuary and we will be rejoicing with the Lord. We want you to know that our admin, our leadership and myself, we're still working uh, to prepare for our return. And when, it, when we come back, rest assured, we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that we lift the Lord like we've never lifted God before. So again, be encouraged, be safe and stay home. We want you to follow all of the protocols that our CDC and our local leaders and our state leaders have put out and know that it's for our good. It's been four weeks now since we've been with you and I know you're missing me as much as I'm missing you. So God bless in the meantime and we'll see you soon. Good morning, Pleasant Grove family. And uh, we're here this morning. Our psaltery reading will be coming from Psalm 118, starting out with verses one and two. I'll be coming out of the New King James Version. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, his mercy endures forever forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endureth forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, his mercy endures forever. And then we'll jump over to verse 14 through 24. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die but live. And declare the words of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We ask that the Lord add his blessing to the reading hearing and understanding of his holy word. And having done that, uh, uh, we have our prayer list. In addition to those who are already on the prayer list, we have some additions. Uh, Sister Doris Robinson, Sister Aldine Pyphus, Sister Joyce Galbraith and family, and Brother Jerome Henderson. Be mindful to keep them in prayer as we keep in prayer all those that we know who are going through some things. And also while we're doing this, pray for our city, our state, the nation, and the world that they deal with this pandemic, keeping God always first. Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Eternally matchless God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for hearing our prayer, allowing us one more opportunity to petition you on behalf of the people and on behalf of ourselves. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, who on today we celebrate in spite of what conditions exist we're still remembering the great getting up morning that we celebrate as the Resurrection Sunday. Commonly called Easter, we thank you that Jesus rose from the grave. Not just got up, God, but had all power in his hands and continues to empower us today 
to spread that wonderful message that he's alive and he's well. Thank you, God, for the doorway by which we're able to attain grace, mercy, and most of all, peace. We pray now for those who are in the various states of convalescence, whether they're in the hospitals, whether they're in the nursing homes, those that are in ICU, not just because of COVID-19, but also for the various diseases and illnesses that exist before this even came about. God, we know you have healing power. So heal as you see fit. Move as you see fit. God, give us strength today. Strength to press ahead in this time of uncertainty. Give us comfort so that we may find peace in you, that we may relish in your presence each and every day. God, I thank you for each name that was on the prayer list today and the name that is on our extended prayer list that we pray week after week. And God, touch. You know what each one of those folks needs. So give it to them, if it be in your will. And now use me in a mighty way so that the word can go forward and it will glorify you, edify your people, and horrify the devil. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray. And you said, and the people said, rather, amen. Amen. I want to call your attention once again to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning with the 13th verse. We're going to focus once again this week on the 13th and 14th verse. I know you're expecting to hear from the, the resurrection that Jesus got up, but because of context, brothers and sisters, we must focus on what God has for us today, and God has rendered a great message for us. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, just two verses there again, it says, At times I may shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Then if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Word of God for the people of God. I want to use for a subject today, Pandemic Chronicles Part 3, of course, but just a couple more things, just a couple more things. I saw a sign the other day as I was driving down the street that profoundly said, everything will be okay. And it was followed by a heart emoji. And I wondered how could someone make a statement like that? How could that statement be true, both in our hearing and in our reading? What makes it, meaning this thing that we call life in a pandemic, what would make it okay? And more importantly, what part can we play to make sure that it is okay? In the last four weeks, I've heard words like uncharted, unprecedented, unimaginable, over and over, each time the newscast begins in our circles and in our friends, we've heard new, profound, expedient words. But in spite of these words, I can say in faith that with the help of the Lord Almighty, we will be okay. Everything will be okay. In fact, I know in faith that in fact we will be better than okay, but we will be preserved in spite of what we see. I know that we have in many cases been restricted in our movement for about four weeks now, that we've been held to only necessary destinations and limited to eating at our own dinner tables, but we have not been restricted in our faith and in our imagination through God. I know that we are at best a little stir crazy, that we're only so many times we can go outside and walk the dog. There are so many times that we can go to the grocery store. And before your hope for a brighter day begins to erode, there's only so much Netflix and so much Apple TV that can be binge watched. And I, I realize, brothers and sisters, that our nerves are getting frazzled because homeschooling is something that we never dreamed of. And the incessant and constant constant occupation of your sofa and your refrigerator by your children is something that you just didn't see. But let me encourage you today that God sees and God hears your cry and your change, my change, our change is going to come. 
See, everything in the world has a shelf life. Everything in the world has a season. But beloved, understand this one thing, that nothing lasts forever and we must be encouraged. Nothing lasts forever except that life that God gives. So I tell you today, we've got to stay in the fight. We've got to stay in the fight. We've got to continue to clean and disinfect. We've got to continue to be humble and pray. We've got to stay in the fight. And if we do these things, I assure you that God will see us all through, even in the face of this pandemic. And God will not just see us through this instance, but God will continue to see us through. See, in our continuing text, we have what are called additional responsibilities that we must attend to as the people of God that are called by God's name. We've got just a couple more things that we've got to do if we're expecting God to heal our land, if we're expecting from God to hear from heaven. We've got some more work that we've got to do. So after we have humbled ourselves and after we have prayed, we've got a couple more things to do. And that includes, first of all, we've got to seek the face of God. And since we have nothing but time on our hands, right now is the perfect time to seek the face of God. See, seeking the face of God in layman's terms means to seek the presence of God. When you consider this phrase, it alludes to the idea and to the fact that the face holds the emotions that are located inside of the person. See, so when we seek the face of God, we are seeking to both understand and to have revealed to us the entire person, the entire being of God Almighty. See, many of us can attest to the fact that the presence of God is what cools the heat from the world. The presence of God calms fears and it removes doubts. The presence of God seeking us out. God is seeking us out. So we should cause us to enter into a posture of worship. When we seek the face of God, we're entering a posture of prayer. We're entering and desiring the yearning, that presence of God, that character of God that is in our lives. So think about this. When you're recording, for those of us who are old enough to date, you spend a lot of time talking to and, and being with and learning that significant other, that person that you desire a relationship. You seek their face in the wee hours of daily travel. You seek their face trying to ascertain who they really are and what it is about them that draws your attention when you seek that person's face. It's not that you're trying to find their quirks, but you're trying to figure out what it is about them that won't surprise you along the way. So likewise, when we are seeking the face of God, when we are seeking God's face, we are in fact getting closer to God than we've ever been before. Seeking the face of God is getting in the presence of God, communicating and communing with the almighty creator. And before I go too far, I want us to understand that God, through the pen of this chronicler, is telling us to seek God's face. That's God telling us to seek God's face. See, seeking is, an, is a verb, and it's part of action that is ongoing. In other words, God is not telling us just to seek God's face in the face of a pandemic. God is telling us to be in constant pursuit of God's face. Even though we're in the presence of God all the time, we are constantly seeking God's face. Now, now, let me say that that sounds counterintuitive. It sounds confusing, doesn't it? That we're in the presence of God, but yet we're seeking the presence of God. It's because, brothers and sisters, when we are in the presence of God, we're not necessarily present with God. Let me put it another way. See, you can be in the room with somebody. You can be sitting in the same room, sitting at the same table, but you are not in their presence if you're not engaged with them. 
See, when you have dinner with your significant other or somebody close to you, you can be in the same room, you can be sitting at the same table, and you're eating the same food, but you're not in their presence because while you're there, you're tinkering on your phone, and you're preoccupied by other things. You're looking at the TV, and you're just distracted overall. That means that you may be present, but not in the presence if you're on the phone and you're playing games. And as the OJs would say, your, your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. You're not in the presence with the one that you love. So it is with God. It's not that we've abandoned God at all, but we're not discarded God by any stretch, but we have just been disregarding God, which is why God is telling us to seek my face. We're not in the presence, but we are neglecting God. Maybe when we neglect God, we don't acknowledge who God is. Have you ever thought about that? We neglect God when we say, like, everything else fails, I can go to the rock. We've neglected the fact that God should be our first option. We neglect God when we don't consider or we don't respect what Christ would do with our brothers and our sisters. There are those who are quick to say that I'm in church every time the door is open, Rev, so I'm all good. Well, that might be true. Are you reverencing God when you're in church? Are you, does God have your undivided attention while you're sitting in the pews? Or are you just texting and playing games and writing notes and making facial gestures to others in your uh, general area? Is worship really happening when you're in the presence of God? Maybe, maybe today our land is hurting with this plague of unimaginable proportions because we have not sought the face of God, at least on Sunday morning. Maybe we've decided that it's okay to ignore God's warnings. Maybe we call ourselves Christian and disciple, but we fail to worship and pray in the presence of God. Maybe it just simply comes down to being ignorant of God. And let me break that down. That's to say we are ignoring or ignorant of God, that God is doing what God does. And we are just watching and we're not participating. So I challenge you today on this Resurrection Sunday to seek the face of God. Learn of God. Be in relationship with God. Listen to God. But most of all, be in the active presence of God while you seek his face, not just while you're off work, not while you're out of school, but when this pandemic is over and the shelter in place order has been lifted, we've got to continue to seek the face of God. And I believe, I believe that God will not just heal our land in the present tense, but God will immunize us for the future. Not only, not only are we charged with seeking the face of God, but we're charged with turning from our wicked ways. Somebody in this moment just said, I'm not wicked, Rev. I'm not wicked, so I've got this one licked. But before we start patting ourselves on the back and giving each other a high five, we've got to understand that in the biblical Hebrew vernacular, the word wicked means to come from a root word. That means that wickedness is a big word coming from a smaller word that essentially means crushing. It means to break into pieces. It makes, means making good for nothing. It means at a deeper level that you're causing injury to something or someone else. Wickedness. God is telling us to turn from our wicked ways. Turn from crushing and pouncing on our planet that we must live on. It's another way of saying stop destroying one another. We can't continue to demean, destroy, and crush the dreams of our fellow brothers and sisters. We can't obliterate and then dismiss those who we disagree with. In short, we cannot and we should not engage in wickedness that causes injury, whether it be physical, whether it be mental, or even worse, whether it be spiritual. We can't do it. 
Satan has and will enter the hearts of church folk, folk who claim to be in the presence of God week after week, and he will use them to destroy the work of God and the people of God, even the church of God. So maybe at the heart of this command from God is the fact that if we turn from our wicked ways as God commands, God is telling us to stop letting Satan use us to destroy God's temple. Most of all, if the pain is inflicted, most of the pain that we have rendered on us is not just organic or natural in nature, but it's a direct and concocted plan of evil that is committed by people who allow themselves to be used by Satan. That's right, Satan doesn't just ease into the church or ease into your house. Satan rides in on our coattails and he uses us like a master puppet minder. See, our lives would be much easier and much enjoyable if wickedness were turned away at the door and love were allowed to come in. Disagreements among Christians is not something new, whether you know it or not, but now it is becoming destructive. And when we insert wickedness and we see Seek not to understand, but to be right by all means necessary when we seek to crush and destroy and to break into pieces the hearts and the feelings of those who disagree with us. We are giving over to wickedness and God cannot use us in that condition. So turn. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from breaking and crushing. Turn from causing injury to others because God is demanding us to turn because our collective, our congregational is turning. Benefits not just us, but it benefits our entire being. It benefits our land when we turn. It benefits the cosmos in which we live as we attempt to do on earth as it is in heaven. As I close this message today, I believe that God has and God is giving us a message of unity, a message that Jesus Christ himself brought forth, not just for Israel, but for America, for South America, for Mexico, for Asia, for all of the world, but for people of today who have strayed from the past where we met God, it is evident that no one or two people is being mandated to do these things, to recover from the sanctions that God has impressed upon the land. But God clearly says, if my people, that's not singular, that's a plural word. In fact, people means multitude. It should tell us that in the healing of this world, it is not a singular heavy lifting effect, but it is a cooperative effort on the part of many people. So if we want to move God, if we want God to move in this pandemic, I believe that God's people will need to humble themselves, that all God's people need to pray, that all God's people need to seek the face of God, that all God's people need to turn from their wicked ways. And if we do, if we do these simple yet spiritually defining things, I believe in faith that God will change our world. So God, we need your help today. We need your help. And God is telling us, I need your help. I need you to be who I've called you to be. Because together, brothers and sisters, together, you and I, together, we can change the world for the better. Together, we can ensure that this world will be around for our children and their descendants. But we can't lose hope. We can't lose hope. We can't throw in the towel. The so song says it's too late to give up now. We can't forget that while we can't trace God, we can trust God. While we can't dictate our desires, we can worship God while God works in this pandemic. So be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Know that our help is on the way, but let us worship God in a way that ushers in our help. And trust when I, when I tell you that one day we'll look back on all of these days and we'll laugh and we'll remember 
but we'll never forget how God moved in our land during the corona pandemic. Amen. We here at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church want to let you know that if this message has been life-changing and transformative in your seeking relationship with God or your already present relationship with God, if you desire to unite with us, now is a good time. Go to your email right now and click on pgbcoffice at yahoo.com. Send us a note. Send us an email. Let us know how we're doing. But most of all, let us know that you have built a relationship with Christ and you would like to share your relationship with us. We also invite you to check out our website at PGBC, you, uh, PBC, pgbcchurch.org. That's PB, pgbchurch.org for updates and information about what the disciples at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Springfield, Illinois are doing for the people of God in our community. And on our webpage, you'll also find a link that will allow you to be a financial blessing where you can click on the homepage on Givelify and you can bless us with not only your time but also your tokens so until we meet again stay safe stay clean and most of all stay faithful in the Lord goodbye for now